Hey, God bless you. God bless you, family of God. It's your brother, DJ Sam Rock, right here on The Blaze, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Blaze Bible Study is about a 25 to 30 minute word, uh, quick Bible study to get us going, get us um, thinking and focusing on things above, not things below, and continuing to look into the Word of God, seeking out the Word of God um, for life, for freedom, um, for eternal life, and for the promises of God to be yes and amen in your life and in my life. Um, continuing the series, the darkness series, the month of October um, is the the month that uh, occults, uh, witches, warlocks, Wiccans, and all kind of people who um, thrive darkness in the darkness. They celebrate, they, they um, pray, and they do whatever they do, the chants and all that for the whole month of October. If you don't believe me, you think I'm watching too many horror stories, you're very mistaken. It's not uh, only... Uh, for horror movies and horror stories, but um, it's true. Look it up for yourself. Um, I've even bumped into some Wiccans and some people who said they're like fifth, sixth generation Wiccans and witches and all that face to face. And I had dialogue with them and they are doing things for the month of October because they feel that that's the closest time they could ever get um, between uh, the life and the dead. So life and death or spirit realm whatever you want to call it. We worship, as a Christian, I worship the God of the living. As those people uh, are being called into darkness, they worship the God of the dead. So for the month of October, we're going to be talking about darkness. Um, tonight, we're talking about lovers of darkness. There are people who love darkness. They'd rather stay in the dark than come to the light. And we're going to prove that in the scripture in John chapter 3. But did you know, before we pray, because I always have to pray and cover these type of um, Bible studies because these are um, deep Bible studies when it comes to the occult and the supernatural things that can happen to a listener who's asleep right now. In other words, that you're just listening, you're not applying what you're learning from the Word of God, and you're just going about your merry way uh, without using the protection of the Word of God, right? But did you know, as God, Jesus being God, I believe that Jesus is God in the flesh. You know, as God... He had every right to refuse becoming a man, but he did it anyway. So as God, Jesus had the right to refuse to become a man. You ever thought about that? Why? Because he was willing to do it. Jesus had the right to be served by all mankind, myself, you, everyone, forcefully. But he came to serve us instead. You ever thought about that? You ever think about that? Jesus had the right to live in peace. He had the right to live in peace and safety in heaven, right? But he willingly laid down his life for my sin and for your sin. You ever thought about that? Jesus was even willing to go and get tortured, to do a, a grueling death on a cross. Why? Because he loved me. He loved you. He cooperated and was willing to do his father's will instead of his own will. Question is, this is the light that came to the world, Jesus Christ. So why are people still in the darkness? I'm going to talk about that tonight on The Blaze. So Father, I thank you for the opportunity to continue to move forward in your mission for my life. I pray, Lord God, that everyone's assignment that's listening right now will be engaged, Lord God, and they will be encouraged in what you have called them to do, Lord God, to do uh, what a light bearer does, what a glory bearer, glory carrier does. To spread your word with love first, Lord God. Wisdom and understanding will come as well. I pray, Lord God, a hedge of protection over every single listener right now in the name of Jesus. I cancel any curses right now in the name of Jesus, and I pray bla blessings, and I speak blessings, Lord God, in the name of Jesus over every single listener, their families, their friends, their loved ones, Lord God. I pray for every single marriage that's under attack right now during the month of October because of curses being um, yielded and curses being sent out. We cancel that right now in the name of Jesus. I pray light to invade darkness, and I pray, Lord God, that you will have your way in this Bible study and in every Bible study that goes forth. In the name of Jesus, I pray this by faith. And we all said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. So, we already discovered that darkness in the Bible, um, the, it describes being covered on the land, like in Egypt, when the, the plagues were sent out, when Moses was told by God to tell Pharaoh to set his people free. It was nine plagues, right? 
um, of darkness in Egypt. I think there's more plagues than that. Um, but you could read in Exodus chapter 10, 21, Exodus chapter 10, 23. I'm just going over this real quick. So I have more my notes from this first Bible study on this in front of me. So excuse me if I said that wrong. But look it up, Exodus chapter 10, 21 and Exodus chapter 10, 23. So darkness um, covered the land. We also know in Genesis chapter 1 or the whole chapter, uh, if you read the account of creation, it says that the Holy Spirit hovered over the darkness. Amen. And God said, let there be light. And then what happened? There was light. When Jesus hung upon the cross from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. On Mount Sinai, Moses drew near into the thick darkness where God was. Why? Because God lives in thick darkness. Psalm 97 and 2. It describes the inscrutable nature of God's workings among the sons of men. He says clouds and darkness are around about him. God dwells in thick darkness. Darkness is also a symbol of judgment, judgments that attend on the coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord. It's a symbol of misery. It's a symbol of adversity, right? The day of darkness. Joel chapter 2, verse 2. Check it out. Caused by clouds of locusts. It's a symbol of uh, what's coming. It's, it's, it's a symbol of what's coming to be or what's happening in um, the future works of darkness those are impure actions um, you see that right now in the month of October um, by all kind of people who are practicing witchcraft and the occult it says take no part in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11 take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness instead rebuke and expose them I mean do, should I go deeper take no part in the worthless deeds, worthless deeds of evil and darkness. They're worthless. Instead, rebuke and expose them with the light, with the light that God has given us, right? With the light of Christ. Works of darkness are impure actions. Outer darkness is referring to the darkness of the streets in the east, which are never lighted up by any public or private lamps after nightfall. I drive rideshare at night and sometimes I go up roads that I still can't understand why there's no uh, street lights street lights it's like pitch black on these roads at night and then they have deer signs great so now you can't see to your left or to your right you got to put on your high beams but when cars come the other way I turn off my high beams so I won't blind them while they're coming and they turn off theirs so they won't blind me while they're coming and there's darkness like if I would turn off my headlights, you won't be able to see anything in front of you. Don't understand, but that's what the Bible talks about. Outer darkness it refers to the darkness of the streets in the east, which are never lighted up by any public or private lamps after nightfall. In contrast with the blaze of the cheerful light in the house of the Lord, right? It's also a symbol of ignorance. And we spoke about that last time. Ignorance and of death. Darkness is breeding ground or ignorance is breeding ground for darkness. That's what I said last time on one of the Bible studies about darkness. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, the Bible says, The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. And this is where we're going to pick it up. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light, a light that will shine on all who live in the land where death cast its shadow. And that's where I want to pick up right now. We're talking about the great light that came into the world. But I'm going to read the whole account of John chapter 3. Because there's a lot of references to darkness in John chapter 3 in the New Testament. Um, you heard of John chapter 3 verse 16, right? The very popular um, scripture in the Bible. Probably one of the most popular scriptures um, in the Bible is John 3.16. Which hangs the gospel, the message of Jesus Christ, right? And why he came. But if you take it from the beginning, John chapter 3, we see that at the very offset, there's a, a Jewish leader named Nicodemus who comes to Jesus, visits Jesus at night. Why at night? Because he didn't want to be seen. He did not want to be seen. He comes to him at night. 
did not want to be seen by his, you know, his colleagues, his fellow Jews, his fellow Jewish leaders. So he comes to Jesus at night. So let's pick it up. John chapter 3. After dark, one evening, a Jewish religious leader named Nicodemus, a Pharisee, came to speak with Jesus. Teacher, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Stop right there. I thought they refused to believe that Jesus was sent from God. I thought the Jews were like not feeling Jesus like that and not even um, believing in what he was saying. Well, obviously not all Jews were thinking that way. When Nicodemus said, teacher, he said, we all know he must be saying all the people he knows that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are proof enough that God is with you, Emmanuel. So in chapter John chapter 3, verse 3, this is where uh, the, the land, excuse me, the line in the sand is drawn between a born-again Christian, evangelical Christian, and a Catholic Christian. Because I've had this question asked to me so many times, why do you have to be born again? Can't you just be a Catholic? And for my Catholic friends, this is the scripture I stand on where it says, Jesus replied, I assure you, unless you are born again, you can never see the kingdom of God. So, this Jewish leader named Nicodemus is telling Jesus, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are proof enough that God is with you. And Jesus is saying, well, there's more to what you're seeing. And as a matter of fact, you're not seeing the kingdom of God yet because you're not born again. So Jesus replied, I assure you, unless you are born again, you can never see the kingdom of God. It's Jesus speaking, not me. John chapter 3, verse 4. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. You see that? He didn't even know what Jesus was talking about. Yet he saw the miracles. Yet he knew that Jesus was sent from God. But he still didn't see the kingdom of God. That's why he asked, What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Do you really think Jesus was saying that we got to be shut back in our mother's womb to do it all over again as an adult? That wouldn't make any sense, right? Although... If God wanted it that way, it would have been that way. But no, God didn't want it that way. So Jesus said, Jesus replied, the truth is, hallelujah, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Of water and the spirit. Or you could say the Greek word for spirit can also be translated wind. Right? Right? Humans can reproduce only human life. Shout out to all the scientists who are trying to do other things with humans. Humans can reproduce only human life. But the Holy Spirit gives new life from where? From heaven. This is Jesus speaking. So don't be surprised at my statement that you must be born again. Just as you can hear the wind but can't tell what it, where it comes from or where it is going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. And I can testify to that. I know I'm saved, but I can't tell you exactly how Jesus saved me, how he changed me. I can't tell you that. I can tell you what he says, how to be saved in the Scriptures, but I still can't figure out how he did it because I know I was going one direction, I was one way, and when I called out to God, he transformed me and he still transformed me changed me i can't explain it it's an eerie thing sometimes to me i'm like how did he do it but that's a god thing right it's an inside job verse 9 what do you mean nicodemus acts he's nicodemus is not getting the revelation jesus is saying it plain he's saying it out to nicodemus and nicodemus is not understanding that proves that if you don't have the spirit of god in you you won't understand spiritual things People say, I read the Bible from cover to cover and I still don't believe there's a God. That's because you read the Bible as a book from cover to cover without being inspired by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is who leads us into all truth. He's God, the Holy Spirit. God, Holy Spirit, leads us into all truth. So if you read the book, the Bible as a book from cover to cover, uh, that's what you're doing. 
you're just reading a book from cover to cover. You're not inspired by the Holy Spirit, and you're not getting any revelation, just like this Jewish leader named Nicodemus. Jesus replied, verse 10, You are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things. I assure you, I am telling you what we, ne- what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe us. But if you don't even believe me when I tell you about things that happen here on earth, how can you possibly believe it if I tell you what is going on in heaven? That's a great question. For only I, the Son of Man, have come to earth and will return to heaven again. And as, and as only I, the Son of Man, have come to earth and will return to heaven again. And verse 14, And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so I, the Son of Man, must be lifted up on a pole so that everyone who believes in me will have eternal life. So we read the statement that Jesus had the right not to become a man, but he did it willfully because it wasn't his will that he was doing. He was doing his father's will. God became a man to show us the way, the truth, and the life and to preach the kingdom of God. And he did it. It's done, right? But this Jewish leader was visiting Jesus at night because he didn't want to be seen. I guess he didn't want to be seen by anybody, but he wanted to ask Jesus these questions. They were pressing questions that he wanted answers for, right? And here's the famous verse, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world, this is Jesus speaking, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. Jesus said, God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. The questions that I get asked about if God was such a good God, why would he condemn good people to hell? Read this, John three seventeen. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it or anyone in it, but to save it and everyone in it. Get it? John chapter 3, verse 18. There is no judgment awaiting those who trust in him. This is Jesus still speaking. But those who do not trust him have already been judged for not believing in the only Son of God. So by, by not believing in Jesus, you're already judging yourself. God is not judging you, judging yourself. Right? Let's continue. That's another Bible study right there. Verse 19. Their judgment is based on this fact. The light from heaven. This is where I'm picking up. The light from heaven came into the world. But they loved the darkness more than the light. For their actions were evil. He's letting Nicodemus know, I know why you came to me at night. He's letting us know, I know why you don't come to me because I am the light. The light from heaven came into the world, but they loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. Verse 20, they hate the light because they want to sin in the darkness. They stay away from the light for fear their sins will be exposed. What did Isaiah say? Expose the darkness. With the light. They stay away from the light for fear their sins will be exposed and they will be punished. But those who do what is right come to the light gladly so everyone can see that they are doing what God wants. So there's a choice. You believe that? There's a choice that those who reject the light of Christ is because they want to be in the dark. They hate the light, Jesus said, because they were they want to sin in the darkness. You know, a lot of things happen at night. I know it. I lived the life at night. I lived the night life, the party life, drug, sex, alcohol, fast cars, fast girls, 
best woman, everything. I did it all. None of it satisfied me. Not proud of it. I got scars for it. I got thoughts about it still that or I have to deal with consequences that I have to deal with. And it was all in the dark. Well, I thought I was I was all in the dark. I was actually hating the light that God kept on putting and bringing into my life. He sent evangelists. He sent Christians. He sent people who loved me. He sent um, messengers of God's word. And I kept on rejecting the light because I was a lover of darkness. They hate the light because they want to sin in the darkness. They stay away from the light for fear their sins will be exposed and they will be punished. But those who do what is right come to the light gladly so everyone can see that they are doing what God wants. Get it? So remember when I was reading Isaiah chapter, I believe it was nine, right? Isaiah, let's let's, let's read it again because it goes right with what I just said. Isaiah 9, 2, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. So in other words, even the people who are walking in darkness, even atheists, witches, warlocks, uh, we all know that angels, fallen angels, Lucifer himself, which is now called the devil, um, they see the, they saw the light firsthand. Now they're walking in darkness. All these people are walking in darkness. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. A light that will shine on all who live in the land where death casts its shadow. And that's here on planet Earth. That's in your in your alone time when you're worshiping idols or you're doing witchcraft or whatever you do in the month of October. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Tonight, today, when you listen to this, I believe that God's going to show you his great light. The light of his word. It's going to give you a window and an opportunity to receive him as personal Lord and Savior. And he's going to rebuke the darkness. A light, right? A light. That's the light of the the world, Jesus Christ. So there's a choice and a decision to be made. Why would anybody in their right mind? And I know that Jesus knows, God knows. Sometimes, uh... I try to figure it out. Why would you, anyone, not just you, me, anyone, why why would anyone want to walk in a dark place or walk in darkness knowing that a great light is shining and that light is not bringing death, that light is bringing life. We know the reasons, so many reasons why people do this because according to what Jesus said, they want to be in the dark. Uh, they want they don't want to have their sins exposed. They don't want people to see their hidden stuff <clears throat> because we know for sure that if your things are hidden, right, it should be in the dark because in the light, like if you had like a, a, a mark on your face or something that you didn't want people to see. Uh, you you probably go somewhere at night. Just like Nicodemus went to Jesus at night and Jesus let him have the gospel, answered the questions, but also told Nicodemus that you're not seeing the whole picture. You're not seeing the kingdom of God because you're not born again. So it's an opportunity for Nicodemus to be born again. Did Nicodemus ever get born again? I don't know. I don't know if the scriptures talks about it. But for, from, from what I studied so far, no, I don't know what happened. Just like I don't know what happens to anybody. Sometimes people ask the question, so uh, my mom, my dad, they were good people. Um, they donated to Salvation Army. Um, they did missionary trips, uh, humanitarian efforts. Um, they went and helped people in disasters. But they never followed Jesus. Are they going to hell? Like, that's a tough question. Valid question, but tough. How would I know or anyone know what a person does before they die? There's a window of opportunity all the time. I believe that God will give you opportunities to your last breath to repent and turn to him. Right. And ask for forgiveness and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. To the last second, I believe God does that to the very last second. 
Because remember, God can read your thoughts too. So even if you can't talk, if you're in a coma or something like that, I believe God can still hear your thoughts. And if you do it, even in your thought process, your thought pattern, in your thought life, I think, I believe God is just God, a just God. Is it fair in my eyes that someone could do all this kind of uh, evil on the other end? Like there's good people with good morals, but if they don't receive Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior, Jesus is telling Nicodemus that, if you're not born again, you won't see the kingdom of God. So the same applies for anyone who doesn't uh, receive Jesus and are born again. But how about the people who do wicked things and dirty things and kill people and do all kind of stuff, right? And rape and incest and murder and, and child pornography and all this other stuff. And then at the very last seconds of their life, they say, you know what? Jesus, forgive me. What happens then? I don't know. All I know is that Jesus said, you must be born again to inherit the kingdom of God. And he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone, it's not a narrow thing, it's not just for a chosen few, everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That's not a narrow message. That's an all-inclusive message. Everyone is invited to make a decision. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. But why do people stay in the light or stay in the darkness? Excuse me. Well, Jesus said, the light from heaven came into the world, but they loved, loved the darkness more than the light. It's a choice. It's a decision. I can't force anybody to believe in Jesus Christ and to repent. God himself doesn't even force anybody because he loves you so much and he loves me so much that he gives us free will to yet to do it follow him or to not he's not going to force anyone into his presence so if people find themselves in hell they can't blame it on god and say well god forced me here or god forced me either way he didn't force me to believe in him and he didn't force me not to believe in him god loves us too much to do that and to be uh, forcefully um, telling us to do this, that, and the third. No, their judgment is based on this fact. The light from heaven came into the world, but they loved the darkness more than the light for their actions were evil. They hate the light because they want to sin in the darkness. And you know people just like that. I know pe- I was one of those people. Glory to God, if it wasn't for God's grace and his mercy and for saving me, I'd still be one of those people who hate the light because I wanted to sin in the darkness. When dark times come, darkness comes, it's always a reminder of, whoa, I better repent. I better behave. I better be careful. I better stay focused on the light because at any given moment, I could step into darkness and stay there. Why? Because things are hidden. Not from God, though, because God sees all things, but you could hide things from people. So we can't all see everything, but God sees all everything. God sees everything. He sees all things. They stay away from the light for the fear their sins will be exposed and they will be punished. But those who do what is right, this is the bright side of things, pun intended. But those who do what is right come to the light gladly. See, you do what is right, you ain't going to be afraid of going to the light if you're doing what's right. So everyone can see that they are doing what God wants. So the decision to be made is, are you a lover of darkness? Do you want to continue to be a lover of darkness? How's that working out for you? I know it is a high in darkness. It's a high in worshiping idols. It's a high in worshiping Satan. It's a high in cults and occults and Satanists and witchcraft and all that stuff. Wiccans and there's a high in it. There's a power in it. But it's still darkness. And Jesus said they hate the light because they want to sin in the darkness. So you're exposed if you're listening and you're in the dark and you do those type of things. You're already exposed. Can't blame God for that. He gives you an opportunity to get out of that darkness and come into his light right now in the name of Jesus. There's a decision to be made. And for those who are already in the light, don't be afraid. Because if you're doing what is right, you come to the light gladly. So everyone can see that um, you and I are doing what God wants. And because of that, um, they have seen 
the light that come, came into the world, right? According to Isaiah. So let's put those two scriptures together. Think about what happened. Think about what was said. God is good all the time, right? But we know for sure that if you're a lover of darkness, you could be a lover of the light by making a decision for Jesus. Nicodemus asked the question at night. Sometimes you might ask the question at night and God shows up and he will answer you. He will give you the way and the path to the light and eternal life that only Jesus offers. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. And remember, God is good. Peace.